Hello and good morning and welcome to our worship together at Holy Trinity Aylesbury. Uh, this is our online church. Uh, it's not as we, quite as we'd like it to be. Uh, we do love to meet together, um, but for now this is what we have. Uh, we're sort of getting used to it, uh, but of course we're really missing uh, one another and meeting together and uh, really looking forward to uh, times ahead. Um, but today we worship online and uh, I'll be leading the service today. Uh, my name is Richard and guiding us through as we come together. Uh, if you are first time you've watched this, if you're new, um, then special welcome to you. Really hope you enjoy it. Uh, really hope you feel welcome uh, and encouraged by uh, worshiping with us this morning. Uh, we are here to worship Jesus together. We're gonna to do that through prayer, through song, uh, and through learning, and hopefully just uh, enjoying being together, seeing a few familiar faces from the church, uh, and doing that. Uh, we do have a, a bonus today for uh, for those in the church family in that we're going to try out coffee by Zoom after the service. Um, so those of you in the church um, should have received some information about this uh, and I'll be talking some more about this um, at the end of the service. So as we come together, let's pray. Lord God, it is so good to be in your presence. Even though we are in our homes or out and about watching this online, you are with us. And we thank you that we can meet with you. Thank you that we can learn from you. Thank you that we can worship you. As we spend this time together, please fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. And may we be receptive to what you have for us today as we bring our worship to you now. Amen. Let's all join together in a song of worship. sins and the ways that we fall short, the way that we live our lives. 
and we come to God to confess our sins and seek his forgiveness. I'm going to say some words and when I say Lord be merciful, our response is forgive us our sin. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us, his, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's great to listen to each other as we share stories of how God works uh, in our lives. Um, and I'm delighted that Alan now is going to share a little of his story. Um, a little of how God has worked throughout his life um, through some difficult times, but also in the everyday as well. Uh, I really hope that uh, it encourages uh, and blesses and we listen to this now. Hello, I'm Alan Smith. Uh, I've been coming to, Christ, uh, to Holy Trinity for about uh, 15 plus years now. And uh, I've only been a Christian for about 20, though. Uh, I had a Christian-style upbringing, choir boy at St Mary's Lewisham and Sunday school at Lewisham Baptist Church. However, I drifted away from the religion, uh, but I still met my wife at a church youth club and got married in 1966, a long time ago. We had been married for 31 years when Glenys uh, needed cataract surgery and during the visiting after that operation uh, she started feeling unwell and I went and got a nurse and upon inspection uh, Glenys, uh, of Glenys, uh, the sister shouted to another nurse to get another staff urgently and shouted at her to run. Uh, there were screens pulled around her and I was escorted into another room whilst I could hear them trying to resuscitate her. I can tell you I was so scared. I didn't know what was happening. As I thought, I was going to lose her. There had been a mistake with the medication and if I had not been around there at that time, she would have died. I had uh, an emerging business and was struggling to make it a success and had put my house up for security for the vans we needed to run the business and I was very busy at work, and as it was only a simple procedure, uh, I wanted to, to only be there a short while. But something made me stay there a little longer. And I was so grateful for being there at that time. I felt I should give God another try. Over the next couple of years, uh, my business went from bad to worse, and eventually I had I had to close the business with debts that I didn't know how I was going to cover. Uh, I'd not taken a salary for over six months and my credit cards were all maxed out. Um, with the thought that I was going to lose my house, I felt so sick and worthless, I believed I should end it all. I collapsed on the stairs uh, just out there and uh, cried out to God for help. I must have been crying and praying for help for over half an hour when suddenly I had a warm sensation that touched my head just there. 
which seemed then to completely engulf me, and I knew we were going to be all right. I suddenly knew what I had to do, and I knew that things would work out. That was over 20 years ago, as I said, and there were many tough times on the way, but with God's help and direction, we made it. Today, I talk to God many times a day <laughs> um, and try to listen to him when he's telling me something. I don't hear voices. It's a feeling that you get uh, that this or that is the correct decision. And suddenly I have words to write a difficult email, etc. All those sorts of things. I feel a complete connection with God and he is helping me and directing me through the rest of our lives. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three in one god of glory majesty praise forever to the king of kings to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. For the stone was moved for good, and the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of those who'd come, to the Father are restored, and the Church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lift the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint, by the blood and in his name, and his freedom I am free, for the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, Praise forever to the King of Kings. Praise forever to the King of Kings.
we're thinking this morning about being bold and courageous. Over these few weeks, we're looking at the early church, and as we're challenged to rethink what it means to be church during this pandemic, allowing the early church to speak into our situation. We're talking about faith in action, what the new normal looks like for us as Christians in 2012. And as we allow God to speak to us, we're reminded of President Trump, who a couple of weeks ago stood outside a burnt out church with a Bible held up. It was a facade, he neither quoted scripture nor did he pray. It was all for looks. We believe that the Bible can speak to us and that we learn a tremendous amount from the early church at this time. Last week we were reminded in Acts chapter 3 about the beggar who was healed. His life was transformed. And we were posed the question, what can Jesus do for us? But also, what can we do for Jesus? In Acts chapter 4, we see how Peter and John were arrested and imprisoned for the first time. How Peter was full of the Spirit. He proclaimed, salvation is found in no one else but Jesus. A life completely transformed. And then here we see in Acts chapter 5, verses 17 to 42, Peter and John's second arrest and trial. Let's see how they're miraculously released from prison so that they could continue preaching as we look first at verses 17 to 20 of Acts chapter 5. Do open your Bibles, go and get a Bible and have a look at these amazing verses. Verse 17. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, the angel said, and tell the people all about this new life. The first thing we see about the context of these verses is that Peter and John were being persecuted and imprisoned for their faith. Open Doors, the Christian organisation that supports persecuted Christians today, estimates that there are 260 million Christians who are persecuted for their faith. One in eight of all believers. Christianity, the most persecuted faith in 2012. Now, I know I'm speaking to you in your own home, and there probably aren't eight people with you, but just imagine eight people for a moment. By the time that you go to bed tonight, Open Doors calculates that eight people will have died for their faith. The challenge for you and me is to be bold and courageous as we live in the power of the Holy Spirit for Christ today. Let's hear from Sarah, a former member of Holy Trinity, who now works for another Christian organisation, Open Doors. OM's vision is for all people to hear about the love of Jesus at least once. We long to see communities of Jesus followers in places and among peoples that have not yet heard the gospel. And as we do this work, we are very conscious that many of our brothers and sisters face real persecution because of their faith. Team members have faced deportation, imprisonment and worse. Believers face discrimination, loss of jobs, threats of violence. But they courageously live out the love that they have found so that others may come to know Jesus too. I think of Asif and his wife Amira in South Asia. When they came to faith in Jesus, they were cut off from their family and friends. They lost their jobs and were unable to provide for their children. They were given a choice, follow Jesus and lose everything, or denounce Jesus and return to their old lives. But they did not want to go back to the life they once knew. They wanted to follow Jesus, even if it cost them everything. And the team came around that family. They found them somewhere to live. They helped Asif find a new job and gave Amira a sewing machine 
so that she could start a small business making clothes. Now Asif and Amira have a new family in Jesus. And today, as you listen to this, believers will be going hungry because of the impact of COVID-19 crisis in their country. They are unable to access the food distributions unless they convert to the majority religion. But teams and local churches are distributing food to everyone who needs it. Not just believers, but anyone in need, regardless of faith and regardless of personal history. In fact, we see time and time again in situations like this, believers sharing food with the very people who have been persecuting them. Thank you so much for that, Sarah. What we are called to do as Christians, like the first century, is first and foremost to be faithful followers. The religious authorities hated Jesus. The religious authorities hated Jesus' followers. These verses remind us that following Christ is not always easy. What matters to God is that we're faithful. At the end of December last year, a prominent Christian pastor was imprisoned for nine years by the Chinese authorities. He was the pastor of one of the largest unregistered churches in the country and said in a statement, I firmly believe that Christ has called me to carry out this faithful disobedience through a life of service under this regime that opposes the gospel and persecutes the church. This is the means by which I preach the gospel, and it is the mystery of the gospel which I preach. You and I are called to be faithful to God, whatever it costs. Now being faithful means reading our Bible, allowing God to speak to us, praying, and being full of the Spirit, living in his strength. It is a call to be committed, whatever the cost. And it also is a challenge to be distinctive and to stand out. Too often as Christians, we are camouflaged, we blend in. There is little difference between us and our non-believing neighbour. Are we drifting into disobedience or in any way compromising in our faith? How would you feel? if you were sent to prison for your faith, what would it do for your faith? If you were arrested today for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? How can we be faithful followers this week? Secondly, we see in verses 19 to 21 that we need to be bold in proclaiming Christ. During the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of a jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. And in verse 21, at daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. They were miraculously released from prison by an angel after a bruising arrest. And the following morning, at daybreak, they were again proclaiming Christ. And in verse 42, right at the end of this chapter, we see that they continue to do that day by day. One of the reasons that the early church grew, and there were so many conversions, is that each and every member lived as a missionary and on a mission every day. You and I need to be obedient, as it says in verse 20, and go and stand and tell the full message of this new life. Now, we don't go and stand in the temple, but we can go and stand with our neighbour, on our neighbour's doorstep, serving and helping our neighbour, standing alongside our neighbour, also standing up for the truth of the gospel as we share it. And secondly, we also need to be speaking out and speaking 
the message, the full message. One way we can do it is by sharing something like a booklet like this, Why Jesus by Nicky Gumbel. If you don't have a copy of this, go online, Google Why Jesus by Nicky Gumbel, and you can get this as a PDF for free. If you want to explore the Christian faith, or if you're any way unclear about how to share your faith, let me encourage you to do this straight after this online service. Let's speak the full message of Jesus. The well-known phrase, preach the gospel and if necessary use words, challenges us that our lives should reflect what we speak. But let's be under no illusion. We do also need to share the words and explain what our faith means. And so we see faithful followers being bold and proclaiming Christ, but then thirdly here in verses 27 to 29, standing up for the truth. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on the cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and saviour, that he might, be, he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Do you know there's a great temptation for you and me to compromise and to give in and not to stand up for the truth? In Matthew's Gospel, we read about how we are meant to be salt and light, being distinctive and shining out. And that is the call of a challenge for every Christian today, to be sought and light and to stand up for the truth in the Bible and the truth of the gospel. Think, when was the last time you had to decide between God and human beings by the things of God and the things of the world? What did you do? And if we're challenged and struggling to think of a time, maybe we're not being sought and light in the way that God's calling us to be. And so in conclusion, yes, let's pray for persecuted Christians, but let's also reflect on the cost for us as we seek to be faithful followers, to be bold in proclaiming Christ and to stand up the truth. Let me finish. Do you know the story of the three frogs sitting on a log? One frog decides to jump off the log. How many frogs are left sitting on the log? Think about it. Three frogs sitting on the log. One decides to jump. How many frogs are left sitting on on that log? No, the answer is not two, it's three. Because there's a big difference between deciding to do something and actually doing it. The world is full of good intentions. Have a think now for a moment. How are you this week going to be a faithful follower? faithful follower of Christ, who boldly proclaims Christ and who stands up for the truth. May God, by his Holy Spirit, give us strength to do this.
Let us come to pray now. Sometimes it's good to be still when we pray and sometimes it's good to be more active. I find walking and praying really helpful. So let's go on a little walk now and pray together. As we come to pray, let us be still. Let's pause, reflect and listen. Where is God leading us today? And we thank God for his goodness to us. We listen to the wind and the trees and we're reminded of his power and his greatness. Thank you, Lord. Lead our prayers now. Father God, we pray for all those who are shielding at the moment. We pray that you would watch over them. We pray that for all those that are lonely, that they would find comfort. We pray for your blessing upon them. We pray for all those that are travelling to work. We pray for their safety. We pray that as they work, that you, they would know your peace for all that's happening at home with their loved ones. We pray particularly for anyone who is going back to work on Monday, that you would help them to adjust and go back to that. Lord God, we pray for our schools and perhaps we think of the one that's nearest to us, where we are now or where we live, or maybe the ones that uh, our children or grandchildren go to. We thank you for the teachers and all the staff that are serving there. We pray that you would keep them safe and watch over them through this difficult time. Thank you for their hard work. Thank you for everything they're doing. We pray for the children, that you would keep them safe and help them, those that have gone back, to enjoy that and to stay safe as they do that. We pray for all families, particularly those that are struggling with this extended time of children being at home. We pray for your help for that, Lord. We pray for resilience. May your love shine through. Father, we pray for all those in care homes. We thank you for everyone who looks after them, all the care workers, all the staff involved there. And we pray for all those in care homes, that you would keep them safe. We think of loved ones known to us. We pray for them now. And we pray that you would keep them safe, particularly from this pandemic. We pray for anyone who's finding it particularly difficult, that they know your comfort and your love. If you can, why don't you take a prayer walk in the week ahead? See where God leads you, see what inspires your prayers. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing a song of worship again together now.
come to the end of our service now. Uh, we really hope you've enjoyed and been blessed by what we uh, shared this morning, but also challenged by it as well. It was great to hear from Alan and from Sarah sharing something of their, it's their stories. So let's be encouraged because we've got such good news to share. We've got the best news to share. And it may be hard at times doing that, but let's catch the vision Let's catch the compulsion that the early church had to preach the gospel and tell their story, to talk about Jesus. Let's pray. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, information about all our church, church activities can be found um, on our church website, uh, which is uh, htaylesbury.org uh, and on social media. Uh, we do send that information each week, um, particularly uh, on, in our notice sheet uh, and by email. Um, if you're not receiving this and you'd like to, um, then please do contact the church office and you'll be able to sign up for that. Now, as, we, as the service ends, uh, we're going to uh, end this service meeting with our new exciting coffee uh, and chat by Zoom. So uh, people in church should have received uh, an email uh, with uh, instructions on it in the last few days. Uh, there's a link on that email. Just click on the link and you'll be able to uh, to join and follow those instructions. Uh, if you're new to church and would like to join in future weeks, uh, then please drop an email to the church office at office at htaylesbury.org and they'll be able to uh, tell you how to join as well. We're going to try for a few weeks, uh, hope it's going to be really successful, uh, but do let us know uh, what you think. That's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. And for those joining uh, Zoom Coffee, uh, I'll see you there shortly. So come and say hello. Bye.